Board of Education is called to order from Monday, May 2nd, 2011. <coughs> Opening business, um, to welcome the visitors. <coughs> um, additions and changes to the agenda. Um, Madam President, we have uh, three additions to the agenda. One is an uh, item to review and approve the professional development plan for USD 350. Uh, another is to approve a resolution to continue using KESB for our legal services. And then the third item uh, is to approve the amended uh, budget uh, from the uh, budget hearing earlier this evening. Madam President, I move that we approve the changes to the agenda. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Okay. Um, all in favor, raise your right hand. Um, six zero. Six zero. <coughs> yeah. Yes. <coughs> Check with her. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Um, uh, moving on to the consent agenda, the minutes of the last meeting, uh, there's two from April 4th and April 11th, and financial statements and warrants. Move we approve the consent agenda. Okay. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? All in favor, raise your right hand. Six zero. Um, are there any patron comments? Moving on to business items. Um, number one is the wind power discussion. Um, Madam President and Board, um, we've been discussing the last couple months, um, actually more months than that, I guess, uh, just looking at possibility of uh, incorporating some wind power into our uh, energy production or usage to reduce our usage here, uh, possibly save us some money. Um, I know that uh, Carolyn Dunn has some additional information, and I'm going to let her go first, and then I have some that I'll share from some research that I've done as well. So. Um, well, we talked about uh, what kind of um, more simple kind of projections might be, um, I don't know, easier for the board to um, process. In the process of doing that, though, um, the vendor has recommended that we wait a little bit. There's legislation pending in the leg in, in the Kansas legislature affecting how leases can be arranged by a third party. And at first, we thought that this would not affect this type of school project if we kept the lease within a 10-year period because it's specifically allowing longer leases to occur. But there's there's some vagueness to what is now actually specifically allowed. So it might be better to wait until the legislation makes that very clear what we can and can't do. So um, it may be resolved in this legislative session. It may be able to be resolved through the KCC. But it probably would be wise not to jump in until there's more resolution at that. So that's where we are right now. The piece, oh, go ahead. What's the issue with the time The rate? issue is um, schools, are, as I understand it, probably gonna, I'm probably going to do this wrong, but I think it's that schools cannot enter into leases longer than 10 years. But those leases, I mean, having it on a longer, a longer time frame is what the wind developers would like to project, I mean, would like to do. It makes it cash, cash flow much more easily, um, but now there's even question as to how the third party can get involved into the shorter term leases, 
and if you don't have that third party involved in it, you don't get the benefit of me having that for profit get the depreciation and pass that through. So without that third party doing the leasing, it very quickly becomes not not financially advantageous. Um, we still there's still ways to capture apparently the tax credit, but the depreciation needs to be in there too to make it very financially appealing. So we need to have more clarity on what leases are going to be allowed for schools. The no, I just I I think it's it's possible that there will be legislative changes in the next few months that specifically, that specifically allow it. Yes. If it, if it spells it out that it allows it, then there's no question as to what. So all these have done it before grandfathered in. No changes have been made. I don't know. Like the, the ones that Moscow and stuff, they may have just bought theirs outright. Mm -hmm. And they're different. Mm -hmm. Using a grant as opposed to tax credit to help subsidize it, things like that. The added information I have is I contacted Quinner. Um, Quinner actually purchased one um, from the same firm that Moscow did, um, the one that Quinner is still running. And uh, I spoke with their superintendent there. Um, he's it only been, this is his second year being here, he said, I'll tell you up front, he said, I'm very pro-wind, he said, but I'm not pro this unit, the one that they have. Um, but he indicated that he had been to a meeting at Oakley at the Northwest Service Center, which is equivalent to ESDAC for us, <clears throat> and heard a presentation from a company called Victor Energy Group um, out of Missouri. Um, and he said, I know it sounds like too too good of a deal, he said, but this company says they'll come in and install one on your site for free. And so I thought, well, it's worth calling. So I called them and spoke with them. And the way the company works, uh, they come and literally install one on your site for free. Um, and as he described it, it's the identical unit to what we've seen and talked about from BTI. It's the same company, 50 megawatt unit on a 140 foot lattice pole or lattice tower. Um, what they do then is they have investors um, who are uh, providing the capital to do that. They then look to see what are your current energy rates in your location. Like for us it's 13.4 cents a kilowatt hour I think, or pretty close to that. Um, and then they establish some rate less than that. It might be 11 cents or 11 and a half or something like that. So that you then have some savings for all the energy that gets generated by the tower. You are then essentially paying them at whatever this lower rate is. Um, so you do have a savings from what you normally pay. Um, the larger savings comes though because this is intend to be a long term deal. Like they are saying they will guarantee whatever that rate is that upfront rate is guaranteed for 15 years. So um, the small savings you have initially continue to grow year after year because energy is probably only going to go up in cost. And so, you know, um, if five years down the road we're all paying 24 cents a kilowatt hour, we're still paying 10 or whatever it was established at. Um, I've asked for a sample contract just to see what it looks like because there are a number of questions I have like what happens if their company goes belly up and we have this tower sitting out there, who owns it? Um, or if it um, if they go belly up and it breaks down, what happens? Or just all kinds of things. I want to see what the language is in the contract. Um, so. I mean, it does sound interesting. On your computer desktop, there's a file there. It's called Kansas Wind Projects 2011. And uh, 
these are our school districts that are already in the process of doing this with them. Uh, and they're looking at, at wanting to do somewhere in the neighborhood of 10, and it looks like they have seven and maybe a couple of special ed co-ops possibly, so, or uh, service centers. Um, so I don't know um, how far they may get. Um, Are they pre-buying energy and reselling it? How's that? What's the angle? Um, the angle is the investors are paying for the, the equipment and then when the school district pays them for however many kilowatt hours mm -hmm. the thing generates that we use, um, that's the yes. return. Um, one of the difficulties, and I think uh, Brad Estes brought this up, um, it could fly in the face of possible rules of what what gets defined as uh, a power generating uh, utility. So um, there are all kinds of things, state commerce things, and, and because this company is outside the state, whether it becomes interstate commerce, then we have to learn about that. Um, so there's a lot of questions we have to have answered, but um, I mean, it, it seems attractive to me from the standpoint that you don't have any investment up front and immediately start to get some savings, and the savings are going to get larger as you go along. And BTI time. has nothing to do with this scenario. No. It's a totally different company. They just happen to have the same equipment. So. Are these schools, have you visited with the schools? Are they doing any type of curriculum also yeah. along I've, with this? I've not visited with I just got this from early last week, I think it was. So. Um, and I'd hope to have a, I said a sample contract they haven't got me one yet. So, um, but it would be my intent to contact some of these schools because uh, at this point I don't know if any of these are actually operating or they're in the construction phase or, or what's going on with them. But I'd be interested in knowing how the if they are operating how that side of it works. So, one of the other issues that we've not talked about is location. Um, when Brad Estes came out and talked, you know, he was talking from the standpoint of uh, placing this thing in the center of the practice field. So it had a hundred, it's a hundred forty foot tower to the, from the ground to the hub, which is the center of the unit. Um, and he was looking at that as a fall distance and zoning issues and stuff like that. Um, one of the issues that I also uh, visited with our property insurance uh, agent about was because Brad had mentioned you know one of the costs we have is insurance and I think we put it as somewhere around two hundred or two thousand a year seems like about right and um, our agent said he would check on it but for what we were talking about he said it'd probably be closer under our umbrella policy maybe like five to eight hundred dollars. So it'd be cheaper to do the insurance side with them, and um, he was going to check, um, you know, if we already have the thing insured and the building's already insured, would we have to place it in the center of that field? Could we place it like <coughs> south of it, for example, um, where if it falls, it's not going to fall on anything residential. It may fall on part of our building, um, but because it's also insured under them. Whether that be any increased cost or things like that. I mean, these things are built such the only way it's going to fall on something if a tornado comes through and knocks it over. Uh, it won't be here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if, that, you know, if that's the case, um, we're going to be looking at building issues anyway. So, um, Stan has the ability with some of the software at his work uh, to take a uh, satellite map and then to place a point and do distances for us and so he kind of worked one up. Um, he did it based on 130 feet. Um, it basically got us clear. So to do 140 we would probably need to move it another 10 yards further north but it still uh, would not significantly impact the practice field. Um, it might Where is that in relationship to the weight room? It would be... Uh, at weight room front door. Yeah, the west door uh, goes straight north about 
It's where the uh, fan, uh, cable yeah. fan stairs where I drew it from. Yeah. Um, it could possibly impinge on uh, the softball field that's out there, the backstop. We'd have to look at that and see. But in terms of the greater field, it would, as compared to what was being proposed, where you plant it right in the side of the field. So. But that, I mean, that is another issue as we, we continue going, looking at this, it's something I have to discuss. But we've already had the discussions, for example, with our insurance agent, and I'm working on that side out. So. So at this point, we don't have anything. We weren't planning on having it as an action item uh, anyway, but um, we're sort of on hold, at least until we get more information from one source or another, and we can bring it back to you at that time. Okay, the next item is summer camp schedules. Mr. Bergen, put at your uh, place. This is a... Uh, This is a, a tentative schedule, um, even when I mean, we're going to ask you to approve it, but understand that it's subject to possible change because um, there are a few scheduling things that we still uh, almost have worked out, um, but we want to have a little bit of flexibility like this. But it gives you some idea of what the uh, use of the facilities are going to be this summer, the various things are going to be going on. Um, essentially, these are corresponding to last year, uh, just placed on what our calendar is for this year. Um, well, if you have any questions about not being able to read my writing. <coughs> um, one thing, for example, that uh, is on here right now that um, We'll just have to see. It may have to be adjusted a little bit, and that's July 18th. We have uh, Mr. Kimmon has a basketball camp. Uh, the football camp that's on there doesn't get impacted. The basketball camp might a little bit. Yeah. Because uh, with all the other things we have scheduled involving the gym, with the bleacher projects, um, those will start uh, first part of uh, first week in August. That's normally the time that we do gym floors. So we've moved the gym floor refinishing back. It will actually be on the 15th and 16th. So we already have a July life. Yeah. Will it not, will they not get damaged with the new bleachers of people carrying all that in and out? Because we'll have Are drop laws and things okay. like that. Yeah. Good. Um, but we need to have two weeks um, with, without that kind of stuff on there because it's a water-based, Polyurethane, so it needs to be able to dry. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, they actually uh, they would be able to do their camp probably like on the 19th, maybe, because um, we just have to be off the floor for three days for foot traffic. Um, it's just higher impact things, um, running across the lifts and things like that. It's kind of two weeks. So. But we do have a lot going on in the summer, as you can see, in terms of activities for kids. So a plan of attack for getting rid of the old bleachers? I was talking to Mr. Bergen, and um, I'm going to work through Booster Club and visit with some of those folks and let them know kind of time frame I'm looking at, find out how many of them might be interested in volunteering to come in. Um, we may look at, we will do as much as we can with volunteer, but uh, we may have you know, hire some high school kids to help come remove some of the boards or something like that. So, um, but we're looking to try to have all of the existing bleachers out uh, by the end of June. So, are you uh, is iron going to act? Is what iron? Yes, yes. We'll get a roll off. Yeah, you might call them several weeks ahead of time to schedule it. Yeah. We've had to call them several times, and they're not always timely. So. Mm -hmm. uh, having one of those roll-offs gives us a little bit of flexibility. So, um, yeah, because we've worked with them before, and you know, call them and they'll say, yeah, it's okay today, and then 
get ready to go. Who's bringing them? Who's bringing that in? We haven't rented one yet. We've gotten them out of Hutch previously. You might check with uh, Benton, the one that did the, the new building down. It came from Great Bend, and uh, it's quite a bit cheaper than that. Yeah. Well, I looked into the Hutch. All right. You talking about for the Benton iron? Waste, yeah. The bike ones. This is a Great Bend. The ones that we've Benton. used in the past. Acme's not a Great Bend. You yeah, see what we've had come down to the farm. Acme. You're talking about a 20 yard waste dump, aren't you? Yeah. yeah. Just to haul the stuff there. Benton. Do they have roll offs? Mm -hmm. Acme Iron does? Mm -hmm. really? We've had them out the farm. That might be cheaper through yeah. Acme then since they're getting the iron. I don't yeah. even know if they charge for the say. trucks or anything. I think they just bring it and drop it off. Yeah, that might be our best bet. Yeah, because we're working with them in the past, they've not ever mentioned that. I don't know so how large they are. I mean, they're pretty, pretty good size. On, uh, on the yeah. When you take the boiler stuff up. Sometimes you get the business. Yeah. <coughs> and that can't pretty good for the house. Questions about the summer schedule then? Any motion for that? Yes, please. Madam President, I move we accept the summer time schedule as presented. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? If not, um, all in favor, raise your right hand. 6 0. Next item is the 2011 2012 fees. Uh, if you look on your computer desktop, there is a word file there called proposed fees for 2011. Um, Basically, um, all of the areas outside of food service um, we kept the same, um, but with the increasing food costs, uh, in large part because of transportation cost increases, uh, we are uh, increasing each of those, uh, in each category by 10 cents. Uh, we uh, didn't have any increase <coughs> for this past year from the previous year. And uh, we did okay, um, but we've seen some significant jumps. Um, I talked to Sandra Davis about this. She indicated that she had had a couple of vendors who basically kind of committed as kind of one of those uh, uh, honor things where someone said, well, this is what we're going to commit to. Well, they've gone back on that and said, we, we can't, we just can't do it. They've had to increase their prices for some stuff because of the fuel delivery increases. So it just increases the cost of the food in general. So. Uh, but I did visit with her and she felt like these would be appropriate to keep us in the Madam President, I would move that we accept the 11, 12 fees as presented here this evening. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Are these pretty comparable to a lot of the schools? Yeah. yeah. You'll find that uh, in the rural areas, they're just almost identical. You get into some of the major metropolitan areas, and it's really kind of strange. They're either going to be um, actually way low or higher. Um, part of it may be just size, you know, if it's a big enough school district, they can purchase some large enough quantities to maybe drive the cost down a little bit. But it's surprising the number of them where um, they might charge upwards of three dollars, three fifty per meal. Um, that's for the kids. So um, our our folks do a good job of keeping the cost down. So. Is there any more discussion? All in favor, raise your right hand. 6 0. Um, item 5 is summer maintenance project. Uh, I'm take it back to item 4. <coughs> oh, sorry. Okay. Item 4. Legislative update information. 
Um, and I, what I'd like to do is I'm actually going to kind of combine item four with item eight, which is schools for first funding, um, kind of related. Um, uh, the schools for first funding, um, they're always, that group is looking at what's happening legislatively, and they do provide us reports um, on things. Um, there is a bill that's still working. Um, it's called Senate Bill 1, and um, we'll wait to see whether it actually goes anywhere. But what it proposes is that any new revenue the state receives off of some, I don't know what you call it, arbitrary, uh, but there's some baseline number from uh, 2010 fiscal year, which is what we're currently in, there's some number that it's based off of, but any new revenue above that would then go toward reducing uh, personal and corporate uh, income taxes. Um, and not that I'm against uh, reducing personal and corporate income taxes, the difficulty with that is everything that is above, any new revenue that comes in, if it's designated for that, that means that no state agency would ever have the possibility of getting any additional funding into the future, because it basically freezes everybody where they're at. Um, the, the fact that it's still alive makes educators a little nervous, and, and other agencies, but um, we'll have to see if that goes anywhere. Um, currently, the uh, conference committees uh, working with appropriations are trying to get to some agreement on next year's budget legislation. Um, they have been working back and forth with this for quite a few weeks. One of the things that, and I know you've probably all heard the phrase, uh, you don't want to know how sausage or legislation is made. Um, they actually use parts of bills as bargaining chips. Um, so if they're trying to get to an agreement on this, I might say one one legislative body like the House might say, okay, well, we'll agree to this if you'll include this part of this bill in the agreement. And so things that had no connection with the original funding or appropriations bill can get pulled in at the last minute. For example, a couple of the things uh, that are in there, or at least one of them that uh, I think I've talked to you about before, is the transportation uh, bill, which would lower how far schools can go into another district to transport kids. Right now, um, for us to go into a surrounding school district, the kid, to get pick a kid up on a bus, the kid has to live further than 10 miles from their own school and closer to the school they want to go to. And we have some kids so right now. So the whole town of Seward qualifies as that for us. Yeah. And uh, this is my my bizarre example, but um, I know Jason Hildebrand. Uh, we go to church together. Uh, Jason lives four miles north and a mile west of Stafford. We could go pick his kids up because they live more than two and a half miles from their existing school, um, and so we could go get them. Now, the fact that he's a board member over there might raise a few eyebrows in the community. So I wouldn't worry about it. Worry about it. <laughs> but um, and you like to think, Dale Dennis says you like to think that we're all family and we wouldn't do anything to hurt each other. Um, but when you get into desperate financial times, school districts might do some strange things. Uh, and so um, I'm not. Like, the whole purpose of this bill uh, goes back to um, Fort Leavenworth. That's where it all got started because there actually is the Leavenworth School District and Fort Leavenworth School District. And so they were actually looking at some way so they could transport the kids that were on post to the school district and get reimbursed for it because of how far apart they are. Um, so that's how it originated, but it's kind of taken on a life of its own, and it's now that is one of the bargaining chips um, that's being thrown around. Um, another one is 
the idea of, and this is uh, House Bill 2395, which would allow districts to spend down, um, there are about uh, 10, uh, 12 various funds that we can carry balances in. And so they're saying as long as the legislature funds us at less than $4,012, the districts would be able to spend down their balances. Um, the idea, the argument is, is that um, if districts were to spend down all their balances, then that would be the equivalent of them not having to take a cut. Um, the only problem with that is we have to have those balances in, in, in many, of not all those funds, but in many of those funds in order to make it into the first three or four months. For example, like food service, we don't get reimbursement from federal government until like October, November time frame. And so we're basically having to operate off what we have as, as cash carryover. So if we spend it down, we'd be operating in the red for several months. So um, You're saying that they're requiring you to spend it down? Well, I mean, they're, they're winding, no, they're not requiring us, but they would give flexibility to that. So districts could do that. Um, the idea like, well, you can do this, this will help you out, but it's a real short, kind of short-sighted thing because, yeah, it would help you for a month and then you'd be in the hole. So that's kind of like the equivalent of um, taking out a new credit card to pay off the overdue balances on your original credit card and you still have the problem after you're done. Um, one of the other significant things uh, that could happen is they're looking at changing the definition of at risk. Uh, right now, we get weighted, we get additional funding for at risk. It's based upon um, kids that qualify for free or reduced lunch. They're looking at changing that to be entirely based upon kids who are not proficient on the state assessments. Um, as I may have mentioned before, I think that's kind of a bizarre way to fund schools um, because you're rewarding them for doing poorly. Um, the more kids you have that aren't proficient, the more money they're going to give you. Um, but they want you to they want you to succeed and no child left behind in raising yeah. your standards, but yet they're going to fund you on your... Yeah. It's a way of, fun, in a way, phasing out at risk if you... Uh, the state would, uh, the state would uh, uh, have about a hundred, it's about a hundred and... Sixty-five million dollars less uh, to appropriate if they did that. So, yeah, it radically changes that funding part of the formula. So, um, at at the rate they're going, um, very likely they're going to go well into May. Um, usually. In most situations, we they're pretty much finished up. I know there's they're in the we begin what's called the veto session and just kind of finalizing things. But they are so far away from getting to any kind of agreement, um, and they may be working at it for quite a while. Um, as of last Wednesday, anyone want to take a guess as to how many education-related bills had actually passed in this legislative session? Passed a, a chamber or passed? Yeah, just passed, been signed. I suppose zero. Zero. We have a winner. <laughs> None of them have passed or been signed yet. So, as of Wednesday. Uh, it's, been, it's been interesting to watch, and so we'll try to keep it posted. But on the School for Fair Funding side, uh, the item 8 I was talking about, because it's kind of all tied in with this. Um, they're looking at, um, timeline-wise, probably getting to court um, next February to March time frame. Um, they had hoped to get to court like in November, um, but there's been some delaying tactics that have stretched that out. The reason they wanted to get in court in November is so that they could get the thing wrapped up before the next legislative session because as they're trying to conduct court while the legislature is going on, it just makes the water muddy. So they 
that's a bad one. So. Anyway, so they're continuing on. Questions about any of that? Small projects, some big projects. We have uh, a hand sink in the locational area that we're going to replace uh, this summer. Um, we have received our first estimates on replacing the fence. I know um, Mitch had brought up the fence around the practice field, but as we've had to replace a number of posts, and it's just starting to look pretty sad. And so we have. Um, actually, we have three estimates from the same company for different types of fans. We're going to get an estimate for at least one other company, hopefully two more. Um, but we're looking at something that's um, going to hold up a little bit longer than we currently have. We're getting estimates to replace it exactly as it is with wooden posts and uh, welded wire, but we're also looking at uh, what it would be if we went in with steel posts set in concrete with chain link both regular grade and commercial grade. Um, and uh, it would be our intention over the summer to have that replaced. Um, we have the bleachers. Um, and I just spoke today with the uh, representative from the bleacher company. We still got everything done that we're supposed to do. He's going to send us color samples and we'll work out a way to get those to board members to see. They have several colors of wood uh, for us to pick from. I'm making a presumption that we're going to go with wood. Um, and I shouldn't go that far, but um, um, we have uh, in the elementary we have some bathroom stalls uh, that we're planning on replacing. Um, um, the volleyball net that we've talked about, a uh, permanent installation with a ceiling mounted volleyball system. Um, we were anticipating uh, a cost of maybe as high as 15000 uh, We've got a bid of, I'm going to say it was 12 12 Friday, Friday, 12 And about 1000 to 1200 for installation. Mm -hmm. And Julianne, we are how close? On donations, we were close to half. Mm -hmm. I was recalling it; it's getting close to half of that cost of donations. So uh, we've gone ahead and told the uh, dealer to go ahead and process our order. Um, it takes about five weeks to get things going, um, so we can have that. Um, our hope is that they would get be here to get that installed prior to redoing the floor. Um, it won't be here for camp. But, um, we have uh, a gentleman who's coming. He's supposed to have been here uh, a week ago Friday, but got delayed, so we're still waiting to see him. He did redoes courts, um, and we have we looked along for the last three years with our tennis court trying to do patches and fixes ourselves. Um, but it's reached the point that we need to have someone that is a professional at it. So uh, they'll come out and give us a, they'll look at it and give us an estimate of what it would take. What we, the problem we have is wherever we have a seam, eventually the material that's in there uh, ages and cracks and breaks off. And so they need to come in and refill the seams and they'll recoat and then they'll repaint uh, with the textured paint that's on there. So uh, is that both tennis courts? Yeah. The both one. It's the course we own. Okay, the other one is the city. Yeah, on, oh. up north is the city and it actually has it's an entirely different type of surface. It's got kind of like an artificial surface and it's got sand underneath it. Um, so the city has invited us uh, to take that over. Um, we've politely deferred uh, from doing that. So, um, uh, we're going to replace the auditorium carpet um, this summer. We actually have had a donation to cover part of that cost, not the entire cost, but um, we'll pick something that 
uh, maybe it's a little bit closer to school colors than orange. And uh, related to that, um, as I know, we have talked on this uh, board over the last couple of years about the seats in the auditorium. Um, we've looked at completely replacing those with like um, lightly, gently used theater seats. Um, we know we would lose at least 100 seats doing that. Um, but um, rarely, I mean, I can't think of a time in the last four or five years when we've had the need for more than 300 seats in there, especially with our student population getting pretty close to that. Um, then another option, and I've, this is the one that I've actually been more interesting because I think our seats look kind of cool in that whole Art Deco type seat, uh, but they are very uncomfortable, would be if we could find a company that actually manufactures pads that you can install onto them. Um, and now found a company, they're going to, uh, we're going to send them one of our extra seats because we do have a few extra. They will do a work up, they'll cover the cost of getting it to them, they'll work up a prototype, ship it back to us at no cost, and we can see what it would look like um, to redo it. They would then manufacture the pads and send them all here and we would install them because they basically just bolt to the music seat. Uh, they can do seat pads and back pads. Um, cost for one unit to do seat and back is under is about just a little bit under fifty dollars. Mm -hmm. So if if we kept all the existing seats it would be about a twenty thousand dollar project. Now one of the issues uh, if you put a seat cushion in, as some of you already know, uh, who have longer legs, um, it's already a short distance between the seats. So if we were to do that, what I would probably recommend doing would be to realign the seats we have. Um, it would probably involve losing a couple of rows, um, but it would still be less rows than if we totally replaced all of them um, and create a little more leg room. So um, we're going to go ahead and get the sample seat uh, made up so you can see it and see what you think. Um, I did bring, uh, they sent me fabric samples. You don't have to select anything, but just so you can see the type of uh, fabrics that they have kind of as possibilities to upholster and stuff in. Um, it's kind of an interesting company. Uh, they work all over the United States and maybe even globally. They, uh, their most recent large job that they did was they were the company that uh, redid all the seats at the Grand Ole Opry after Nashville was flooded. But there's a Kansas connection uh, because they do seats of all kinds. They have a plant in Yoder that does bus seats um, for the bus assembly plant that is in Yoder. And so to get the seat to them, we just are taking the seat to Yoder and they'll put it on their truck and they'll take it to Ohio and work it up, send it back to Yoder, we'll pick it up and that's how we go. Um, so it's kind of a, there is sort of a Kansas connection there. But, uh, um, they, they do nice work and they're quick and uh, I mean they could make it as fancy as they want. Like when I started talking, you know, seat backs and stuff, they said, so do you want to do like a cutout on the seat back? And I'm like, what's a cutout? And they go, you know, we make like a little sculpted pattern in there and it makes it look real nice. I'm like, maybe we'll see. <laughs> and so, um, you have initials. <laughs> yeah. It would require drilling. No. Nope. Hole? No. Nope. The, what they would do is they would use the existing seat. Uh, the existing seat has four bolts in it. They would uh, okay. design it so you pull those bolts, you drop the new padded seat. It has four bolts on it down and put the nuts on and not be good. But to realign it and to give more leg room, we would have to down the cement. Yeah. So you have to re drill and fill in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That would be more involved. But 
um, it still may be less than you know taking all those seats and getting rid of them and bringing in something different. You it's really still, think that's going to be an issue then? You know, the is, padding, padding's going to push your body that much forward? No, that's the first thing I thought of. Yeah. I've, I've talked to several I people. I give you more room because you're setting up higher if you got longer legs. Well, it might. Um, Not this way. The, uh, on the, this one. Yeah. There's well, no pad on the back at all now. Is yeah, it? there's it's, not. Yeah, when you put a pad well, on yeah, the back, you're, is, you're going to be that yeah. much farther forward. With the prototype they're going to make up for us, we'll have one on the back. And so we'll take it in there and set it down and try it. And we'll see. But it's nice to have you know, a couple of options to look at uh, that doesn't totally take out some of the character of the auditorium in the process. So, anyway, uh, that's another one of the projects. Um, uh, changing tables. We have changing tables. Whether we'll get them installed before graduation or not, we'll see. And I am just about done with <laughs> <laughs> that. I have to tell you that. <laughs> That was not an easy project, as easy as it sounds like it should be. Because um, next time you go into the bathroom, I want you to look to see, especially, well, yeah, I don't know if they're going to go into the bathroom. But, um, for those of you that do, um, the amount of available wall space none. is, yeah, virtually none. The only spot that is available is immediately inside the front door. Um, and we Everybody found can one. see you. Yeah, well, <laughs> under the code. The alternative yeah. is at the hall where <laughs> they see just like that. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, anyway, so we're going to try it. What did mothers do without those? I don't know. know. <laughs> you know, and, and I, we didn't have them growing up, but I have watched some in some places, and I don't think I would put my child on one because I've seen some of the things that have happened because on those. Of the, and they're not clean. So that's the thing. Some and I'm like, clean. I'd rather lay the, my blanket down that I know I can go home and wash it and put them on the floor than put them on those changing tables. Well, we'll try it and see. The ones we got come with, they have containers of disinfecting cloths and stuff right there, so um, we'll see how it works. There actually is a little bit more wall space in there. It's bad here, so. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a great thing for a man to yeah, go in there and change it. That's where uh, we got to be then. Oh. Another project, uh, and again, um, I'm probably working with the Booster Club. Um, I contacted someone who designs uh, sprinkler systems to s give us some idea of what, what we would need to do to install a sprinkler system on our main football field and possibly the practice field. The idea being, um, if we had free labor um, and all we had to do is buy the parts, um, we could do it really expensive, relatively inexpensive. Um, I think we have people in the community who have already been contacted that would provide like a trencher to do trenches to put the stuff in. Uh, there's enough expertise, people that are, have done plumbing, and I put all the sprinklers in my own yard, so I have some sense of what's involved in it, and uh, so we might be able to do that. It would help uh, lessen the amount of maintenance time involved with that and probably increase the quality of the field. Uh, in the long run. So, um, so we're investigating that. Um, I have a couple rooms that over summer will be replacing carpet. Um, the carpet in the computer lab uh, that Dick Smith kind of operates out of. Um, I don't know how old it is, and I know why they haven't replaced it. It's because it's going to be a real pain to do because we have all the computer stations in there and stuff like that. Um, but what we're going to look at is changing the existing carpet out with the type of carpet we have in the halls <coughs> and the squares because then you can take the carpet up in sections and pieces and not have to relocate all the equipment. And then you can just put the squares down to replace. Um, uh, oh, the last, I think about the last thing, this isn't really a summer project, but just a place to report it. Um, we received information from the state um, uh, surplus about the possibility of getting a 50 kilowatt generator. Um, and you may wonder, why do we need a 50 kilowatt generator? Um, a couple of reasons. 
I mean, it's not a need, but a couple things to consider. One, um, especially as we look at the wind energy thing, if you recall, we talked about uh, the possibility uh, if you were put in a demand meter, if you could do things to level the demand. Uh, and so a generator could be used that programmed in to come on uh, when you have peaks hit your system to level the demand so that you don't have as much uh, load and so your energy costs are less. The second thing is that we've had meetings with the local emergency preparedness teams uh, and one of the things they have interest in doing is using the school as a crisis recovery site because um, not that we won't uh, possibly have some damage but there's parts of the building that we know will still be standing and functioning um, as far as uh, being able to do like showers and uh, do clothes and things like that but also meal preparation and so having a generator uh, on site we would have it wired in so that if we needed to you just throw a breaker and you could power the kitchen and, and probably quite a bit more than the 50 kilowatt unit um, so as uh, help with crisis recovery. Um, I did some pricing on them. Uh, the ones that I priced uh, were around twenty-five to twenty-seven thousand. Um, they're selling these for five, five thousand uh, dollars. They only have about fifty to sixty hours on them. Uh, basically, when Katrina, Hurricane Katrina, went into New Orleans, one of the uh, responses uh, after the fact was. The government felt like they needed to have more power generating possibilities. So they bought all these generators and they basically sat in warehouses and had people that came around once a month and starved them up and ran them for 10 minutes and then shut them back off. And they realized that they're just not getting used. Plus, their philosophy on how they're going to react to these situations is they, they've purchased much larger generators that would power like a whole city. And they're on the back of the semi, they just drive the semi in and wire everything in and they go. So they're looking to distribute these generators to places that would be able to use them. So we've got our name on the list and we'll see. Who's it through? Uh, it's through Kansas uh, Surplus. Is it limited to schools getting these? No, any, any governmental agency, I think. I called uh, Steve Moody to let him know because I know that they had been looking. Well, um, the, in the state of Kansas, there are two different uh, organizations, agencies. There's federal surplus and then state surplus. They actually uh, are located in exactly the same place. The two facilities are side by side uh, in Topeka. And uh, school, schools, municipalities, other types of public agencies can go there and buy excess property that they have. So and they send us a catalog periodically and, and emails when they have special things like this. So um, they send out this email to try to get find out what the interest is before they go out and procure a whole bunch of these things. Oh, so the states procure them? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Are you limited in what you can do with them afterwards? Um, um, we can't I sell them. <laughs> Party says we can make a good business doing this. Stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Merchandising. We do have to, uh, if it functions the way the other type of things like that work, we have to retain it for at least five years. Uh, After that point, then you can dispose of it. For example, we had to sign stuff. Uh, when you go out and walk through Joel Miller's shop out there, all of those lathes and things like that are all federal surplus stuff. They used to be in shipyards and places like that um, so um, and we just recently we haven't obtained it yet but a, uh, a federal surplus thing that we're going to get is a space shuttle tile cool yeah I thought it was kind of cool <laughs> I contacted Andrea Sikis and I said uh, so not have asbestos or anything you know <laughs> yeah we asked that question too <clears throat> but um, radiation. Uh, they're supposedly valued at about a thousand dollars. Just this one tile is what it costs to manufacture it. So um, all we had to pay was the shipping. 
and we have to ensure that we hold it for five years. Um, if it starts to fall apart after that, we can dispose of it. We just can't sell it. So I can't remember how many they had. I think they had three thousand of them. So mm. anyway, um, those are some of the summer projects we have. So we're going to be going to be busy. So in addition to all those normal stuff that we do. Any thoughts or ideas of things? Uh, you can let me know. <coughs> oh, one other thing I forgot to mention: it's not a summer project. It's a project we're trying to get done before graduation. Uh, any of you that have ever, uh, all of you have at some point, but come in the main entrance over at the high school. When we had floors carpet replaced in the building uh, five, six years ago. Uh, we also had all the entryways uh, tiled because they take so much weather traffic from snow and rain and stuff. Um, and the carpet just doesn't hold up well. Why we didn't do the one in the main entrance over there, I don't know. But uh, it gets a lot of water and the carpet just doesn't hold up very well. So we're having that replaced with tile. So we're trying to get it done before graduation. So uh, let's see. Water in that area of the building. I mean, you can't, there are still, there's no, there used to be a leak in the auditorium on the roof, but there no longer is, no, right? No, so we replaced the roof, um, but we haven't got the tiles replaced yet. We're, we did all of the cafeteria and hallway out in front of the main gym. We still have other areas that we need to do. That's what I'm um, We have set up scaffolding in there to do that. So, but we, we can look at that and see if we can do it. say, exactly. <laughs> Good time to do that. Yeah, over there on the, what would be the southeast corner over there? There's several that look pretty rough. It's, it's hard. The right right way. It's, it's hard. also south west. Directions in there get kind of goofy because it doesn't seem mm -hmm. very square in the world. But uh, as you face the stage, the right hand, and right in front of the right hand, mm -hmm. exit door. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I'll put that down. Mm -hmm. Okay, that takes care of some of the summer maintenance projects and number six, auditorium yeah. seating. On to number seven, budget reductions. Um, we have this down as a motion item. Um, um, you wouldn't actually have to have a motion uh, if you didn't want to, because the things we've discussed are already in place with people that are retiring or resigning and things like that, but more just want to advise you of them. Um, there is a couple things regarding this that, that fall under the area of personnel that we'll bring to your attention in the executive session, but in general what we're looking at is we have um, Mr. Losey is retiring, uh, regretfully for us, probably not for him, but, and uh, uh, that was one of the things we were looking at, that those duties being taken over by the superintendent's uh, office. Um, uh, Marsha Dryden is also retiring, uh, we were looking at uh, replacing her with a half-time nurse, and then also reducing from two librarians down to one. Uh, the elementary librarian position would be discontinued and uh, the person in that position would then move to an elementary <coughs> teacher position. So those are the primary reductions uh, that we have. But as I said in executive session under personnel, um, I'll share some additional things uh, that have come up related to different personnel. So um, we actually don't have anything we actually have to act on. So we can just simply move on if we rather. Okay. We have already covered item eight, schools prepared funding. Mm -hmm. um, number nine is the financial report. On your computer desktop, there is a file called April 2011 financial statement. 
a PDF file. For this time of year, we're on target with moving. I mean, need to be in terms of just what these parts of the year we have left and what costs we have left. The two biggest parts being in the personnel uh, and probably at this point in the year transportation. Uh, you can see the various percentages we have remaining there. Also, if any of you have a good crystal ball to know what uh, <coughs> gas and diesel are going to do next year, you might let me know in the next few weeks. So. Well, what are you to <laughs> well, there are schools that are making their own. <laughs> making their own diesel? Bio diesel. diesel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, schools are mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's classes in the kids' room. Mm -hmm. Out of garbage and things, too. Mm -hmm. Cooking oil. Cooking oil. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My Mother Earth News magazine has a biodiesel kit machine you can buy. Really? With a homeowner. Huh. And you could buy 10 of them and make it work. Okay. In your magazine, we'll look at it. Go to the restaurants and get their grease. <laughs> yeah, we want to make sure you do that with permission. And I've heard of a couple of cases of people showing up late night with a tanker truck and <laughs> acquiring that stuff without permission. So, it's pretty sad when people have to steal fry grease. <laughs> Okay, there's no other questions. And I do apologize, I don't have the balances tonight. Um, I'll get those to you later in the week. Okay, that moves us on to the added agenda items. The first one being professional development plan approval. Uh, on your computer desktop, there is a file called PDC Revised 2011. And it should appear to you um, with areas highlighted in red. Those were the changes. Uh, we just had a few uh, very minor changes. Um, one of those in terms of the, on page one, looking at uh, membership, um, changed, it says, in one teacher at large. Um, I don't even recall, maybe Mr. Bergen or Mr. Lewis, I can't even remember what we changed that from. Um, Say that again. Oh, I know what it is. I don't remember now. We had, we had designated in there one special ed right. teacher. Yes, yes. okay. Now and right. we have in the past <laughs> usually had one, but yes. um, we have small enough numbers there that we kind of end up beating up on some of them because we keep coming back to them every other year right. for membership. So we just had one at large no, to like cover that. We're so kind of limited on special ed. Yeah. Page two. Page two. The count is voting council membership. Is Changed that because um, the language we had in there, um, it wasn't that we were doing it incorrectly, but what was in there could be misunderstood because the professional development council does vote on various things, but the way the language was in there, it made it sound like the only way we could do anything is if we took it to the entire voting body, and so we put in there voting council membership. Uh, I think it previously said voting membership. 
which would have included everybody. Um, and that's not how it was intended to function and hadn't functioned. Uh, so we just did that for clarification. The last page. And I, sh I should explain, we, uh, we actually do, um, this is the guideline for how the professional development committee uh, works. Um, we have to submit this to the state uh, every five years, and they look at it and review it and make suggestions for changes. Um, but every year, we look at how we're operating, and we may make changes as we go along uh, and modify things. But um, this is where all that kind of gets captured formally then and uh, is sent to the state. So. Uh, were you talking about the one PC representative? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can't remember. I, I can't remember on that one either. What it used to say. I don't know. We, wherever that was in there, wasn't clear. So we put that in. Anyway, it would be uh, the PDC's request um, board uh, approve this and they can then submit it to the state for review. So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded for the professional development plan. Um, is there any discussion? All in favor, raise your right hand. Six zero. And I do want to take this opportunity to thank uh, Carolyn Dunn. She serves our board representative on that committee and <coughs> comes to meetings. I appreciate her insight there as well. Okay, that takes us to uh, item two under added agenda items and that's the KFB legal services approval. Right. Um, we actually have to do a resolution. Um, to do uh, to use KASB for our legal services. KASB, um, one of the things, parts of their service that we uh, pay for is they help us with updating policies and uh, legal questions related to education. Um, and they're just a great um, source of information for us to do that. Their fee uh, is based in part upon enrollment. So uh, for us, that is $1,400. Um, but they do have, there's a, an agreement or a resolution that I will pass it around here uh, for you to view. Um, and if there's questions, I can kind of answer those for you. Uh, otherwise, we would offer it um, for approval to continue on agreement with them. You feel you get $1,400 worth of good out of them in a year's time? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, so we'll take that up there and get it to us. Ms. Madam President, I move that we approve the KASB Legal Services contract for 11 12. Second. <coughs> moved and seconded that we continue the agreement with KASB Legal Services. Um, all in favor, oh, sorry, no more discussion. All in favor, raise your right hand. 6 0. That moves us on to item three under added agenda items, and that is the amended budget. Uh, Madam President, um, at 6.45 this evening, we held a hearing on amending our uh, textbook and federal funds uh, portion of our budget. Um, we, there were no uh, community comments, uh, no objections, so we would offer those that amended budget for acceptance and approval by the board. So moved. So it's been moved and seconded that we accept the amended budget. 
Um, is there any more discussion? All in favor, raise your right hand. Six zero. Moves us to communications, board members' activities and reports. Mitch, shall we just start with you? Nothing here. I got to go to Pratt for the special ed co-op meeting, and it was enjoyable as usual. We uh, they'd hired the uh, new director. I forgot what his name. Brian Cunningham. <laughs> yeah. I, I didn't hire him. I was, no, no, I just <laughs> you, know, you forgot his name. I didn't know his name. Yeah. And. Uh, uh, finalized his employment contract, I believe, some items there, and the special ed co-op people were supposed to be voting on ratifying their uh, employment contract, and we don't know how that ended up. And uh, I think that's about it. Okay. Administrative reports. Mr. Losey or Mr. Bergen? Should have my <coughs> sheet at your place there. I uh, have the enrollment figures, and we have dropped a few students here in the last couple of weeks. Um, the item is very short this time. Fifth and sixth music concert was on the 25th. Uh, Miss Taylor had kind of a little musical thing that they did, the kids did a great job. It was one of those things where it's, it's fun to watch their performance because they're having fun doing it. Um, she, she made it really enjoyable for everyone. Uh, we have completed all our, our uh, Kansas assessments. Um, I went over and visited with Mr. Bergen about it and, and talked about uh, putting down the, the figures and stuff, and these are all just preliminary, of course, and then I forgot to put them on here. Uh, our target area is in math and reading, and I don't remember exactly. In math, it's 86.7 maybe percent, It's and in reading was 87 point something. Uh, our math students have done very well. They've scored over 88 percent of our students have scored uh, in meet standard. Our reading, we're about one point below um, what is there and, and as I said these are very preliminary and we also have other indicators that they look at uh, for example for us it's attendance rate and if we show uh, improvement then they that uh, is a positive for us so that uh, hopefully in the end we will meet the uh, requirement here and meet the AYP. Um, last thing I have is our elementary track meet is on May 13th uh, Ms. Friesen is working with the kids now during her PE classes. They're going up to the, the track working. Uh, we've sent out letters uh, to parents, probably have gotten your letters. Uh, we have many parent volunteers, which is, is uh, always a plus because we have so many things to do. So uh, that's on the afternoon of the 13th. We try to start around 12.15, I think it is, 12.30 in there somewhere. With the fewer number of kids that we have, uh, it doesn't take quite as long to run the, the track meet off now. But it's always, uh, it's like about anything that Miss Friesen does, you know, when you go watch her PE program, how everybody knows where they're supposed to be and what they're supposed to do. Um, and you'll see that up at the track meet too if you happen to come. And it's, it's always enjoyable to watch those. And by the way, she told me uh, just today, she's She's scheduled a really nice day that day. No wind. It's not going to rain. So come out and watch us if you want. That's all I have. Mr. Losey. Yes, sir. I have a question. Hold it. I'm going to alphabetize my answer. Yes, so yes. <laughs> uh, on those scores that you gave. Yes. Uh, to be proficient, what percentage? What? What? Oh gosh. Your, I I don't you have. You have a seventy percent on the test. I mean, to meet the standard. The, the target, you mean the right. number, it's in the 80s. No, well, the percentage on the, that the individual would have to, have, what, what is it to meet standard on, the, I don't oh, know, standard. Yeah, they I would have to look at that range. Well, I was just kind of curious. Yeah, the range for 
Or is that uh, one different for different For reading is different than it is for math oh, okay. and so on, and I, I don't have okay. it with it. All right. I just, well, yeah, we, can, we can bring the categories. Yeah, we can yeah. bring the categories next month. Yeah, we sure can. Yeah. Sure. I was just kind of curious what, sure. what you had percentage-wise individually. Uh, the I mean, the interesting thing, um, <coughs> we do ours grades three through six. It's the total number of students, but if you look at look at each class, um, if I remember correctly, well, it doesn't matter. One of the classes, um, if they would have had one more student score proficient, and, and actually they only had three that didn't, if they had one more that would have, that class would have made the target. This way they were, they were just under the target, but overall we met it. Uh, so with the, with the number of students we have, one student can make a great, great big difference. And Mr. Smith, Danny Smith and I were talking about that today. You know, in 2014, we're supposed to be 100% proficient. But you will always have, you will usually have that one student that says, I don't care about this. I'm not going to try. And you know, if you have, we had 101 students take it. If you have 100 make proficient, but you have one that doesn't, you have made it. So it's, a, it's an interesting target to shoot at. <clears throat> okay, let me this, get off my soapbox. <clears throat> the student decrease here, is it the same people that have moved in to make the higher number, or is it a different, you, I mean? No, I, it's different. And, and I was it's, just wondering if these people were just kind of moving. It's interesting, we, we do have a couple that have done that, have yeah. gone, well they got yeah. here and then they left, and then they're back, then they left, and now they're back again. But, that's but these three, no, the, this is different. Okay, thank you. Mr. Bergen? Yeah. I put, uh, uh, I'm going to put everything, I think I, yeah, I put it there earlier. Um, the one thing we just did, uh, some of you did, she did, uh, she did uh, enrollment, it's been pretty much around there, the whole 136 is what it is, as of today, it's been pretty much there the whole time, 138, 137. Uh, we've lost a couple of, uh, we lost a couple seniors this year. So that's, um, I just mentioned about large group music that we did uh, last month in Pratt. Um, the dessert concert is tomorrow evening. All of you are invited to uh, come watch that. Honors luncheon. We used to do have an honors banquet. Now we have an honors luncheon. You're all welcome to come to the square. Mrs. Hayes wanted me to make sure I personally invited all the board members to come to that Wednesday at noon. If you're not busy, you can come out there and eat with the kids at the town square, just like Miss Friesen did. It'll be uh, nice and sunny and no wind. <coughs> um, yeah. Class night is the, is the 19th. You're welcome, even if you don't have a uh, son or daughter in bowl, you're all welcome to come to that. That starts at 7 o'clock in the auditorium. Uh, Booster Club All Sports Banquet is the 17th in the big gym, starting at 6.30. We started doing one where we put them all together instead of having them separate. So, um, art contests, we went to that last Wednesday. I put in there how we placed the kids that placed Juan and Jacob Blunt. Um, Jacob Blunt, when you look at Jacob, he doesn't look like ceramics, but whatever works. You wouldn't believe what you find in ceramics. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. When, I, when I look at him, I don't think ceramics, I think other things. <laughs> And then uh, last Saturday we had state solo. Uh, Jeff received a one on his tuba solo and a one on his vocal solo. Uh, we are working on, Mrs. Haynes and I are working on pre-enrollment, which we'll, we'll be talking to students in grades uh, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 about class schedules and classes and things for next year. Uh, and like, like Mr. Hosey said, the reading assessments and the math assessments we have finished. Uh, I just jotted down there preliminary scores. Uh, you can see our preliminary scores math 86.2 and the target is 82.3. Reading, our, math, our reading score is 95.4 and the target is 86. So we'll probably go ahead and use those scores and call them through another preliminary since they're ahead of the target. 
and uh, a copy of your activity account. Oh, it's on your computer. It's on your computer. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Mm -hmm. On your Thank you to the mm -hmm. principal, Dr. Kennedy. Um, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I try to operate on the principle of not asking people to do things that I would be willing to do myself. Um, so Saturday, I got the privilege and experience of taking the ESL endorsement test. Gail Cornwell is sitting back there, and she did that. Um, and so I haven't commiserated with her yet, but um, it's, a, it's a great way to get a good headache going on a Saturday morning. <coughs> we had six people. Uh, take it, and it'll be about four weeks before we know the results. Um, so far, as I may have been in K2, we've had 10 uh, passed. Um, a couple that didn't the first time will be taken on Saturday. So we're hoping for a better set. This is still a success. It's a very, very hard test. Um, so, um, but I appreciate the efforts that, that the folks are making to do that and to help us out. Um, there will be uh, an article in uh, the weekly column thing that I do in the paper. I put something in there thanking uh, as many people as we can identify that work officially for the track meets. Um, if you haven't been to one of our track meets compared to a track meet somewhere else, um, our folks do a great job. Uh, my wife, uh, who doesn't know a whole lot about track, um, went to the Spearville track meet, not to the Spirage, and then our school district. But she said it went on forever. And uh, so we have people that volunteer their time, come in and do the same thing every year, and are very good at it. Um, and some of those same people are in here. And so we, I put something in the paper just thanking those folks because um, it really does make it uh, enjoyable. Uh, not everybody wants to do. Uh, to host a track meet because it is a lot of work and so it's fun to have people that enjoy doing it. So. Um, also, uh, in that same uh, newspaper article, I put something in there about uh, for anybody that missed the high school choir concert, uh, which was Thursday last week, you missed a great time. It was a lot of fun. Um, and you can imagine a cross between uh, watching uh, what you would think of as a traditional concert, doing the pieces that they took to state and regional and things like that, mixed with an episode of Glee. Um, that's what it was like. Um, they did some very high energy stuff. We had uh, a couple of people that uh, Miss Taylor knew from college, one that played drums, one played incredible guitar, came in and accompanied our kids on some of these songs, and it was just, it was fun. It was a great time, so uh, that was. That was exciting. Um, some of you may have followed some of the newspaper coverage and, and media coverage uh, on McPherson uh, getting a waiver from No Child Left Behind. Um, if you also follow the coverage, you probably heard this past week that they got uh, kind of a disappointment because they discovered that they are not waived from meeting AYP. So, they went to all of this work and created this huge program thinking that they would be able to get out from underneath that and they haven't accomplished that yet. So, uh, But we're still watching what they're doing because they're doing some unique things and so to see if there's any that we might want to incorporate in. Um, see your, <coughs> see your lunch was mentioned, the uh, dessert concert tomorrow night. Um, I can't remember, did you mention the man trip, Mr. Bergen? No, I didn't mention the band. I still play in trips. Forgot about that, sorry. Um, so that's going to be a yeah. fun time for everybody, I hope. Uh, that's the 13th or 15th. Yeah, I yeah. think it's one day later. Yeah, you yeah. volunteered the chaperone. Yeah, that's good. Okay. <laughs> I need to meet with Mr. Millis afterwards to find out all the stuff that I need to look out for. So. <laughs> Uh, I think that's all I have. Okay, is there any miscellaneous then? That would take us into executive session for personnel items. Uh,
make a motion to approve Mr. Hunton. Yes, you did. From me. <laughs> second. I second the motion okay. to stand made. Yeah. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? If not, all in favor raise your right hand. Six. Bill, did you raise your hand? Yeah, it is. Six zero. Oh, oh, 20, 20 minutes. I, I, 20 minutes. that was in there. Yeah. 20 minutes with calling Mr. Bergen in at the end of the <clears throat> towards the end of the year. Do you want more time? Do you need more time, Brian? Can we just have five more minutes? <laughs> yeah, sure. Can. Yeah. <clears throat> um, I have several uh, Madden friends up from Sonic. I look at my script. Uh, I have several resignations for the board to consider. Um, uh, first, we have a resignation from the City Fault as junior high volleyball coach. Um, we have a resignation from Mary Green uh, as one of our food service workers. From Velda Young as one of our custodial staff. Um, from uh, Bill Clausing for high school tennis. Jane Bennington as high school social studies teacher, and Mrs. Owen, did we ever, it's like 30, it's at least 33, 34 years. Yeah, I believe I so. We're going to, we still don't know officially, but she's been with the district, district for many years, so. Um, and then also, um, a resignation for me uh, that would allow for uh, me to take retirement and then return in August uh, as superintendent. So I have to have a 60-day break in service to do that. And so I would ask the board to appoint Mr. Burden as interim superintendent for two months, June and July. And uh, I would ask the board to do motions for all those. Wait, can we do can one do combined them. and then uh, one separate? Yep, yep. You can do them in however you would like to do them. You can each individually. So. Madam President, I move to accept the resignation of Dr. Kimberly for his current contract effective May 31st, 2011, with all district contractual obligations to be finalized by that date. To appoint Mr. Bergen as interim superintendent for the months of June and July with a one time stipend of 500, and to offer Dr. Kimmore the 11 month contract commencing August 1st at the salary of 76093 with Capers penalty to be paid by the school district. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion on that? Do we call for discussion on that? Is there any discussion? If not, all in favor, raise your right hand. That's 6-0. Do we have a motion for the others? I move that we accept the resignation of those other ones that were mentioned. City Falk, Mary Green, Belda Young, Jane Bennington, and Bill Clausen. Seconded for the resignations of Cindy, Vilda, Mary, and Jane, and Bill. Um, is there any discussion? All in favor, raise your right hand. 6 0. I will let the, <clears throat> let the board know that we will be recognizing um, many of these folks who have been with the district for uh, some time uh, at the end of your breakfast. We have uh, retirement gifts and recognitions for them as well. So uh, we just appreciate their service. Many of them have been with us for a long time. So it's with regret that we accept those. Uh, future agenda items. Um, 